am Susie Menkes, and what a joy it is to be back in Paris for Haute Couture for the first time since the terrible pandemic. I am honoured to have an opportunity to talk to Maria Grazia Curie, the creative director of Christian Dior. Maria Grazia's support of women has marked fashion history, and I can't wait to find out what she has in store for us today. Good morning, Susie. Good morning, Maria Grazia. So wonderful to see you, for me to be here in Paris. And um, it's a great moment. Also for me, I uh, uh, like to come back uh, just a little bit uh, more in real life uh, after this pandemic. I've got a name for you, and it is that you're Wonder Woman, because you have done so much so you've just come back from Greece, where you showed a collection, and um, you had people there sitting in the audience, and I felt very sad not to be there myself. But of course, the great moment now is for haute couture. How did you feel now about what you're going to present? I'm very excited, and at the same time, is the big emotion. We are really proud that it was uh, possible in this year to make a show in Italy, and I was super happy, and also in Greece. But to come back at the fashion show during the fashion week is another story. I want to ask you something which is really rather a deep question. What do you think is the future of haute couture? How can you make sure that haute couture stays alive and well? I really believe uh, in haute couture because I think uh, it's an important element uh, of our heritage, especially for Dior. In the other side, I think it's very important to maintain because speak only also about uh, our tradition, our craftsmanship. Uh, was very difficult to work in this moment. So um, our work is also uh, to maintain uh, this tradition uh, strong uh, for the future. <laughs> Nobody could have missed the challenge you've brought to Haute Couture, but have brought to um, the Christian Dior altogether, which is that you're looking at things from a woman's point of view, and how you are amazingly standing up and saying that women's rights are important. You're putting that in clothes. It's pretty strong and pretty amazing thing to do. Why did you start, and how do you feel about it now? These arguments uh, are very important for me. I think that my point of view for Dior was uh, to, to show like this idea of a femininity was uh, completely different. Uh, also because um, I think it's very important to explain very well uh, the relationship that there is between clothes and body and identity and culture. So in some way, I can understand that is not a traditional way to, to work in a Dior house, uh, in a house that has a so important heritage. But I really believe that uh, we have to change this point of view in fashion. You are also campaigning for something else, which is the work of human hands. I really admire you for that, because it seems that you have found, in many cases, a technique which is dying because the next generation are not using it, and so you're looking at elderly people who are passing on this miracle of the hands, and so that you can use it. Is that something very much in your heart when you set out to do each set of collections? I really believe that haute couture, what you create with your hand is uh, around the world. And uh, a brand like Dior that is so big can support this kind of solidarity to maintain life, uh, this tradition. I'm rather intrigued because there are elements, although Christian Dior was so different from you, there are elements when you seem to be a little bit alike. And these tarot cards, I don't really know so much about it, but there's a mystic feeling about some of your collections, one you did about a year ago. And where does this come from? Were you always like that? Or was it in looking at the work of Christian Dior himself that you felt that this was something that touched your heart? Uh, there is something that I uh, was interested in also before. Probably when I arrived in Dior and I see how much uh, he was fascinated about tarot, I started to study much more. And now I understand uh, also that tarot is another way to be a psychoanalyst way <laughs> to think about ourselves and reflection. So it's a way also to, to reflect about your work, uh, about what's happening around you. And I think it's very helpful. I think a lot about your daughter, Racheli. Have I pronounced her name right? Mm -hmm. And she's so 
often beside you with these collections. Is she really beside you there, trying to make you feel how the next generation feels about clothes, about women, about men, and about things that are really much deeper than a dress? Oh, yes. Um, uh, Raquel, but also Nicolò, are very important in my career too, not only in my life, because all the discussion that I have with them help me to understand more my time. I started to work in fashion so many years ago <laughs> that we receive a different uh, education. And to have this conversation with someone that has a different age, that received a different education, I think is really, really inspiring. It's really an intellectual conversation all the time. Now comes the time when you've got to tell me a secret. I know you said that you can't say a word about the collection, but can you just give me a little idea of what it is, what the theme is or what you care so much about or what is special and what I should look for when I'm sitting in the audience, which will be a great moment to me. Oh, that's something we can say to you that uh, I'm very happy uh, that we did uh, this collaboration with this artist uh, that is uh, Eva Jospin, and uh, her uh, artwork uh, is about uh, embroidery. And so we can uh, work with this school in India that we want to support, uh, and all the women and men that work in embroidery in India in this difficult time. We really renovate the collection with a specific material textile that in this time the risk is that we lost this tradition. So we have a fantastic flower <laughs> in a very beautiful technique, but we have also beautiful cashmere that we made in Tarsia with a special um, uh, textile style. The fashion is something that you can see in video, but it's very important also that you touch uh, with your other sense. Am I right in thinking that you are the great champion <laughs> of haute couture? <laughs> but you are, because you have, you started with it and you haven't ever dropped it. And you have brought, I think, a lot of the essence of couture into ready-to-wear. Do you feel that sometimes, that it's all part of the same thing? I was so lucky to work uh, with uh, Mr. Valentino, uh, with the Fendi family, with the founder of the company. Uh, that gave me the opportunity to know this work in a way that is uh, incredible. That was very helpful for my career, for my knowledge. I am so happy. I invited at this show in Dior also the two couturi, two premieres that worked before in Valentino and now they retired. I learned so much about, uh, with these women, they, to stay with them, to see like they work. So I think that that helped me to translate that in my work, in my haute couture, but also in Pret-a-Porter. And I hope also to, to give the same opportunity um, at the studio that work with me, to speak with the premier, to, to have a conversation. Because we are not to forget that now is much more difficult for the new generation, because the company are different dimension. So sometimes a designer never met uh, the, the premier, but is a really a, a teamwork. And only in this way you can uh, improve uh, your culture in fashion. You know, Maria Grazza, everything you said to me today has made me feel that you really believe in couture, that you're carrying on with it, you're pushing it forward. So it's really a happy reply to my questions earlier on about will it survive, will couture survive? As long as you're around, it's going to survive. That's what I say. Absolutely. <laughs> we want that survive. <laughs> and we work hard every day because we want uh, for the future, for the new generation. I can't wait to see the show. Thank you.